right, it's time for some phonics. And as always, we're going to start with uh, a few flashcards. So first of all, we're going to do our uh, graphemes. So they could be single graphemes or digraphs or even a trigraph, who knows? So see if you can say them and then I'll say them afterwards. Have a go. How did you get on? Brilliant, sounds great. Okay, now we're going to do some tricky words. Remember, these are the words that we can't always sound out using our phonics. Sometimes we've just got to know what that word is just by looking at them. Okay, so we're gonna have a go at those. Again, they're going to come up on the screen. Uh, you can have a chance to say them and then I'll say them and you can check. Brilliant work everyone, well done. Now what we're going to do today is some reading and writing. Uh, we're not going to learn any new phonemes, we're not going to uh, be focusing on anything in particular, we're kind of going to be looking at all of the sounds that you'll have learned uh, and thinking about all those tricky words as well. And we're going to be uh, reading sentences and also having a go at writing some sentences as well. So we're going to be working hard. What we're going to do first is we're going to be reading some sentences. Now, uh, to make it really clear, I'm going to show you a screen and it's going to have a sentence on. I'm going to do a my turn first uh, and I'll talk you through how I would read a sentence. First for words, to make sure that I know what the words say. And second, to make sure it makes sense in my head. Um, and then I will put some more screens up for you and you can have a go at reading them. You can obviously pause them if you like. Okay, so we'll have my turn first. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do with this sentence is that I'm going to have a quick skim and scan of it with my eyes and I just want to get uh, an overview of the sentence and look at the words that I can read. So already I'm seeing there are some quite short words that I read a lot and that I do know. Okay, so words like I, to, go, to, the. Okay, it's not helping me make sense of the sentence, but I can already see ahead there are some words that I know instantly I can read really quickly. Okay, so I'm going to have a little bit of a go. I, and then there's a little bit of a longer word, and it's a trickier word. I can see that it's got ed at the end, ed. Now, I know that that means that it's a verb, and it's in the past. It's a past tense verb, because we add ed to show past tense. So I can get rid of the ed in my brain for a minute and concentrate on those first couple of letters. I can see that it's at want. That does not make sense in my head. I know that if I think about my phonics, that an A after a W often changes its sound to an O. So I'm going to try that. Want. want. That's better. It makes more sense. I wanted to go to the, and I've got another long word here. So I'm going to just have a little look at it and see what I can see. I think I can use my phonics for this one. So it's swim, swim, ing, swimming. I wanted to go to the swimming. Mm, I think phonics will help me with this one too. P -oo -oo, pool. I wanted to go to the swimming pool, but I, ooh, bit of a tricky word coming here. I'm looking at it. Owl mm, doesn't make sense. Oh, hang on. 
I know that in the middle, those letters, O-U-L-D, and I think about my O-U lucky duck, making that ood sound. So, could, mm, and then there's that weird N and T. Mm, I think that's couldn't. So, my sentence is, I wanted to go to the swimming pool, but I couldn't. I'm going to say it once more, making sure that that sentence makes sense in my head. I wanted to go to the swimming pool, but I couldn't. Okay, we've got another sentence here. I'd like you to pause the video, have a little look at it, and then we will read it together. So pause the video now. Okay, I hope you've had a good go. The sentence reads, The rabbit was looking for treats behind the garden shed. The rabbit was looking for treats behind the garden shed. Okay, our last reading se uh, sentence is here. So again, have another look at it. And we'll read it together in a moment. So pause the video now. Okay, the sentence reads, she went into the deep blue sea and saw some dolphins playing. She went into the deep blue sea and saw some dolphins playing. Brilliant, you did so well at reading those sentences and it's, it's a really good thing to be able to do. And don't forget, once you've read them, if you are struggling with some of the words or you've had to sound out some of the words, it really makes sense to go back to the beginning and read the whole thing again once maybe even twice maybe even three times just to make sure that you really understand what you've read now we're going to have a go at writing sentences this is going to be a little bit more tricky i am going to say a sentence out loud and i'm going to ask you to write down what i said now this is going to be a little bit more tricky i can't really show you what i mean because i know what i'm going to say but I can give you some top tips. My first top tip is that you should listen, listen carefully to all the words I'm saying. Uh, then you need to think and say the word in your head say the sentence in your head make sure you're clear about what you've got to write another top tip might be count the words that i'm saying how many words are there in the sentence that i am saying and that will help you to check because if i've said seven words in my sentence but you've only got four words in yours you might have to listen again uh, then you also need to, just to make it a bit more tricky, you also need to be thinking about your punctuation. Every sentence starts with a capital letter. Some might finish with a full stop. Some might even be a question. I need a question mark at the end. And if you felt it was a particularly exciting sentence, you might even want to use an exclamation mark. So thinking about punctuation. And then always my last advice to everybody is check back with your eyes. Read through what you've written. Is everything there on our checklist? Have you done everything? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to say a sentence in a moment. I will say it twice. And then I'll ask you to pause and you can have a go at writing it down, okay? Okay, I'm going to say our first sentence. I'm going to say it once, leave a little pause. Then I'm going to say it twice. And then you can pause the video and have a go at writing it down. And then when we come back, we can have a go at writing it together, okay? The sentence is... There is a child in the playground. 
there is a child in the playground. Okay, well done. Hope you've had a good go at that. It's not easy because it's very difficult listening to words and then trying to remember them so you can write them down yourself. But that's okay. That's why we practice them. So we're going to have a go at that sentence. There is a child in the playground. Now, first thing we need to think, it's the start of a sentence, so I will need that capital letter at the beginning. The first word is there. This is a word we rewrite a lot in our stories, in our writing, and it's one of those tricky words we should be able to just write. Okay, we should be able to read. Um, it might be a little bit trickier to spell it, but it should be okay. So I've got my capital T because I know the first part of there is the. And that's one of the ones we can all have a really good go at. But I know there is more to there than just the. So we have an R-E. There is. Is is a tricky word, but luckily it's a short tricky word that I think we all manage. There is. We have an I for the if sound. And even though it sounds a little bit like a Z, we know that we have an F. There is. Ah, I'm not even going to talk about that because I know we can all do it. There is a child. Hmm. Now, this one is a little bit of a tricky word. Most of the sounds we can sound out. So, for instance, we know at the beginning of the child, of a child, there is a ch. It is a digraph. So, I know that that is the CH digraph making the ch sound. So the next bit that's a little bit tricky, ch, I. Now we know there are lots of different ways to uh, write down the sound I. In this one, it's one of the ones that trick us because it's actually just the letter I on its own. It usually makes the I phoneme, but in child, it makes I, ch. I, uh, there we go. There is a child in, that should be a lovely one we can sound out, and we should just really know that. In the, we know that already because it was part of there, it was the first part of there. There is a child in the playground. <gasps> little bit of a bigger word to worry about so we will break it down into two parts it's a compound word which i know you've also learned about recently compound word is when we have two words that go together and they make a new word so i'm going to break it into two parts the word is playground i'm going to look at play first so we've got our oh uh, and then it's a Oh, there are lots of ways of writing the A sound, the A phoneme. But I know at the end of words, it is usually A-Y. And even though playground is a long word, I know that it's a compound word and play can be a word on its own. So it must be the A-Y, play. I'm happy with that. And then we've got ground. Still one word, remember, so I'm not leaving a gap. G -er ow. Hmm. Now I know that ow can be O W or it can be O U. <sighs> it is a little bit of a tricky one. And there's no, well, I think ow is usually at the end of the word. O-U is usually in the middle of the word. I'm going to use my best bet. And I'm going to go for the O-U. So, g -r ow mm. There is a child in the playground. Now, my final thing. I was happy with the spellings because I've really taken care with that. But remember, I'm going to do my final check back. And I'm going to do it with noisy punctuation because we said punctuation was still important. There is a child in the playground. 
I really want to do my full stop, but I can't. It's not there. Good thing I checked. There is a child in the playground. Perfect. Hi, well done. How'd you get on? Brilliant. Okay, we're going to do another sentence. So again, I'm going to say it, leave a little pause, say it again, and then you can pause the video and have a go at writing it down. Remember to listen carefully, to think and say the sentence in your head, out loud if you want, maybe count the number of words that I'm saying, um, thinking very carefully about writing it down, checking your punctuation, and do that final check at the end, okay? So the sentence is, when did you go to the toy shop? When did you go to the toy shop? Okay, how did you get on? Brilliant. Um, sorry if you heard my dog Basil barking in the background. I hope it didn't put you off. Now I've moved to my green pen because my blue pen was running out. And we are going to have a go at writing that sentence out. And the sentence was, when did you go to the toy shop? Now, at the beginning of my sentence, the first thing I'm going to be thinking about is that capital letter. When. Now, when can be a little bit tricky, and I often see little mistakes made when I look in books. We have that W. I'm making sure that W is nice and tall, nice and big, because it's a capital letter. When the letters are the same shape, when they're lowercase and capital, it's really important to show that difference. So I do know it's a W. Now, I often see when spelt like this. And it kind of makes sense, because if you sound it out, when, it seems fine. But, we must remember that when is one of those words where you've got the WH making the W. So, when did. Did's a nice easy one. We can certainly sound that one out nice and easily. Nothing too tricky there. When did. Now, you is a tricky word because it sounds like the U that you might write it like this. And I see this quite a lot. I see this quite a lot as well because it does sound like it's got a ooh, sound on the end of it. But we know that this is one of our tricky, tricky words. And we know that it is very unique. No other spelling really like this. It is Y-O-U. Okay, these are one of those words that we just have to know. Where did you go? Again, go is quite a tricky word. I often see it's spelled like this in books because it sounds like it's got the O, oh, the W sound at the end. But this is also a tricky word. And we need to stop after the O. Oh. When did you go to? This is a word we write a lot. And it is a tricky word. But I think we write it so often that I don't really see many mistakes there. When did you go to the, I'm not even going to worry about that because I'm pretty sure we can all manage it. When did you go to the toy? Got my first sound, oi. Hmm. Could be oi, oi, or it could be Oh, why, boy? Hmm. Sometimes we have to make choices, but we have to think about our best bet. What is our best bet? And I know that oi, oi usually is in the middle of a word, and oi, oi is usually, not always, but usually at the end of the word. So my best bet is going to be o. Y for toy, and then I have a little look, and kind of my brain is saying, yeah, that is the right spelling, so I'm happy with that. When did you go to the toy shop? Got a diagraph at the beginning. I love the sh diagraph, there we go. S H sh R When 
did you go to the toy shop? And I'm putting a full stop there. I'm going to read it through. I'm going to do my final check. When did you go to the toy shop? Feeling like something's not right there. I've put, I've put a full stop. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, when did you? When can be used at the beginning of a sentence as a question opener. Am I asking a question? When did you go to the toy shop? Yes, I'm saying something that needs an answer. So it must be a question. So I must need a question mark. Hi, I hope you've uh, enjoyed reading and writing some sentences. It's always really good to practice both of these skills. Keeps our hand in with uh, writing and spelling, helps our memory, helps our brain to develop, and obviously keeps us up to date with our reading as well. I uh, hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye from Mrs Haynes.